Hello guys, in this session I'm going to show you how we can create a Django application as employee management system uh, from scratch using Django and Python. So here on the desktop what I'll do, I'll just uh, create a new folder where I want to create my application. So I'll just say like this, uh, uh, employee underscore management, hit enter and first of what you need to do is you need to open up this folder okay just copy this particular location like this and now you need to start a new command prompt and navigate to that particular folder you just type cd paste the path hit enter and you will be inside that particular folder now here is the location where i want to create uh, my application first what i need to do is i need to install a software called as virtual environment so i have to say pip install virtual env see this will install a software which is called as virtual env and now using this virtual env software i'm going to create a virtual environment called as my env hit enter and let me show you in the background what is happening see in this particular folder a new folder is going to get created which will be called as my env and it will be having a scripts folder where i can find my activate and deactivate patch file so using this file i'm going to activate my virtual environment which i have named it as my env now here you just have to say my env backward slash you have to navigate to that scripts folder so scripts folder here see guys s is capital so that's why i have to write it exactly like this s capital s c r i p t s so let me just make that uh, spellings correct p t s then backward slash activate hit enter and it is going to activate your virtual environment and if it is successfully activated that name is going to appear here on the left side of this particular path okay now in this particular path i'm going to install the django library so in order to do that we just have to say pip install the django okay hit enter and it is going to connect to the internet and it is going to download all the necessary django files which is required for our application so once the installation is done uh, let me just show you that particular folder see this is the location where the virtual environment and the django library and all those things are installed right now now uh, if you say in the command prompt django hyphen admin hit enter and you are going to get uh, all these commands which you can use in your project see first uh, command which i'm going to use is to make a project see that is here we have something called as a start project so in order to create a create the main project okay see employee management folder here what i have created on the desktop is just the location where our project is going to get created but uh, here now in this uh, folder in this employee management folder okay i'm going to create my project and uh, here is where i'm going to name my project so in order to name my project and to start a project you just have to say django hyphen admin see django hyphen admin and the, i'm going to use one of these commands that is start project and it is without space so start 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 project okay i can say it like this employee emp manage Meant. see this is going to be the project name emp underscore management so hit enter and you'll be seeing one one folder like this called as emp management and if you open this folder and you are going to get one more folder called as emp management and this will be the main location where all the files are there but i don't want like this folder structure see what i'm going to do i'm just simply going to delete this one for time being and here i'm going to use this django hyphen uh, django command once again to create a project and but this time what i'll do i'll come to the last and put uh, a dot symbol and then press, press enter okay now what it's going to do is see it's going to just create only one main project folder that is employee management and if i just open that it, it you are going to get all the files like this now just go back and here is the location see this is the main location where we are going to create our application that's it okay so let me just hit enter once again and our project is successfully created okay now just to see whether this project is running perfectly fine or not okay i'm going to use this manage.py file okay so in order to run the project all you, you have to do is just say python use this manage.py file and use one of these commands to run the server see here we have a command called as run server so let me just put it here and say run server hit enter and it is going to give you a link uh i think uh, something 127 yeah this one uh it uh, runs on 8000 link so as soon as see as soon as uh, i did uh, run server see automatically a database got created over here which is called as sqlite 3 it is inbuilt database with django library so in order to run our project all we have to do is we have just uh, copy this uh, 
uh, URL and use any one of your browsers whichever you are using uh, let me just go open up my Chrome browser paste the path over there hit enter and it should start our application okay it is taking a little bit of time well let me just close this one and uh, let me just redo it one more time uh, let me open up my Chrome browser let's copy this URL paste it in the tab hit enter and yes okay see you're going to get uh, this particular screen with this rocket symbol and it is uh, doing some kind of an animation like this okay if you get this screen it means that we have successfully created our project okay so now let me just uh, minimize this one okay see this is going to be the main folder location where we are going to create our project and our project name is called as emp underscore management not the outside folder which is called as employee management which we have created on the desktop okay now our project name is emp underscore management and it is attached with the sqlite 3 database okay and manage.py is a main file which is going to run all the django commands okay now what we need to do is we need to just uh, stop the server okay you can hold control and c uh, in this command prompt and it will stop the server for us okay now the next thing what we have to do is we have to create uh, our app see our main app in this uh, employee management project now this app is going to have all the employee details in that one okay but first what we what i'll do is i'll just uh, uh, navigate to this uh, folder see i'll just copy this location and uh, you will be needing any one of the editors ides uh, to write the program so i'm using visual studio code so let me just open a new visual studio code like this uh, you just have to go to file say open folder and here at the top paste that path hit enter see that employee management project emp management project as well as the my environment will be here select uh, click on select folder and you'll be inside this folder like this in the virtual environment okay see this is the location and if i just expand this tree you are going to see all the settings.py urls.py all these uh, files which are which are related to this particular project okay now in this uh, particular location okay see this is the root folder okay this is the root location of the entire project see in this project i'm going to create that particular app from my command prompt see let me go to the command prompt and say like this see but this time what we need to do is we need to see we have uh, closed the server okay the server is not running anymore okay so here what i'm going to do i'm going to use the same uh, let me just type it once again see if i if you say django hyphen admin hit enter and it is going to give you all this uh, admin or uh, you can say like uh, keywords or something like that okay so these are the commands uh, so now in order to start an app uh, there is a command called a start app okay so here what i'm going to do i'm going to say django hyphen admin i need to start an app uh, which is called as emp now hit enter and you'll be seeing one more emp folder got getting created over here and this is the main mini app which you have just created for your project okay now all you need to do is we need to register our app with the main project see our main project is called as emp underscore management and it has a file called as settings.py now if you open this file and if you just scroll down a bit and you're going to see all the installed apps automatically present over here we have the admin we have the author we have the content types sessions messages and static files now here just like this only we, we will have to write our apps name which we have just created which is called as emp then put a comma at the last and save it see this is how we successfully save our app or we can say we have registered our app inside our main project in settings.py file okay so this is the first step which you are going to do okay now if you expand the tree emp that is your main app we are going to see a lot of files like this admin app uh, apps.py models.py test.py and views.py okay see these are all the files which is related to this mini app which is called as emp and these are all the files which is related to the main project emp management now the first thing what i'm going to do is i'll go to see in my emp app I'm just going to go to views.py file. See, here is where I have to create all the functions in order to go to that particular page. So, let me just uh, create a function over here uh, called as all employees or something. Okay, see, it's going to take take a request as a parameter. So, request is one of the parameters which we have to pass inside the function name. And it is going to return you uh, an HTML page. Okay, and that HTML page can be can be anywhere in your project now. Okay, but for time being, what I'll do, I'll just say HTTP response. Okay, it has to give me an HTTP response. 
okay all like this so let's say h1 okay all employee page see this is i'll uh, just close the h1 tag also over here like this and uh, this http response okay you need to import it okay from the django library so let me put it here at the top from django dot uh, that library name is called as http we need to import this http response okay so once when it is done okay just like that i'm going to create uh, one more function over here uh, which will show me the single employee page so let me just name the function also as single employee and it is going to take uh, along with the request parameter it is let me say it takes uh, the employee id okay employee id as one of the parameters and that parameter okay here uh, it's going to uh, take uh, show us the http response page that is called as a single employee page so let me just put it like this single employee page in h1 and uh, this uh, okay this particular thing what i'll do single employee page okay and here just uh, before the h1 tag okay i'll just put a curly brace like this and here after that double colon i'm going to say dot format see dot format is one of the operators in uh, string in python and i'm going to say here that employee id is going to get shown to me which is getting passed over here okay so from the url i need to pass one employee id and that particular page single employee page if i pass the employee id as one it is going to say one over here because that is the format i wanted to see here okay so we have two functions sir. one which takes us to the all employee page and one function which takes us to a single employee page depending upon the employee id which we are going to pass okay now the next thing what we are going to do is in the employee app itself we are going to create a new file which will be called as urls.py now this file will contain all the urls which is associated with the emp like now the person wants to go to the all employee page so uh, we have to create a route for that and if he wants to go to single employee page he has to create a route for that okay and that route or you can say url are given like this url patterns is equal to see as a list we have to give all the urls okay and for that we need a function called as path see function to go to all the front page means all the employee pages see it can be like this uh, uh, like this you can give a forward slash and say or first you can say all employees then forward slash okay see this is one of the urls it's going to be and for this uh, okay to show all the employees uh, what is the function name which we have created that is called as all employees so let me copy that name and come here and say like this see in a file called as views okay we have a function called as all employees see this is how we mentioned that we have a function called as all employees in views page so first of all what we need to do we need to import this path as well and we need to import this views.py file as well okay so first uh, i'm going to say like this from the root folder see this is the root folder okay and where we have this views.py so i'm going to say like this from this views.py file i need to import okay that uh, you can say star okay star means everything okay or you can say like this uh, i'll just remove off this and say from root folder you need to import the views file okay if we do this also now the error is gone which was below this okay and now we need to import this as well okay path is a function see there is a file in the main project employee management which is also called as urls.py see here like this how they have imported the path okay i'm just going to grab this uh, from here itself let me close it so that there is no confusion see now i'm in the url.py file of the emp not employee management see i'm just going to paste that here at the top as well okay so both the paths are done now okay and just like this see i'll just give a comma over here copy the whole thing and i'll create one more path which will take me to the single employee page and i'll create a route for that called as single employee okay like this and here what what we need to do is see we need to use the square angular brackets you can say okay like the square brackets and now here one parameter is going to come which is going to be an integer id okay the integer value uh, whatever emp id which they are going to pass so let me keep it as emp id itself 
okay see this is going to be the router okay in order to go to the single employee page okay and for that the function which we have created is called as single employee so let me just grab this very quickly and paste it over here okay so now both the routes are done okay but here one small thing we need to do okay we, we have to name each and every route and all employees page i'm going to name it as uh, i'll name, name like this name equal to either single quotes or in double quotes you can uh, i'll say it like this all employees employees so there is no confusion see my route is also all employees the function name also all employees just like this only i'll name it also as all employees done and for the single employee page also i'm going to do the same thing name equal to in single quotes or double quotes i'll just give this name as well okay so this is the name of these two routes let me save it and these are the two functions okay these are the two views or routes you can say which we have created in order to go to that specific page okay now it is showing an http response for us now that all the functions as well as all the urls of the emp app is ready what we need to do is we need to go to the url structure file of the main project which is called as employee management now here as you can see we have a path to go to the admin panel of the application now just like this only you just have to copy this picture over here and here what we need to do is see let's say I, I need to go to the student or the employee management okay so first of all what i'll do i'll just uh, keep this as empty and here what i'm going to do i'm going to say we need to include all the urls okay we need to include all the urls of the emp app so i'm going to use the inbuilt function called as include and here in double quotes or single quotes you can say see our app is called as emp and inside that we have a file called as urls.py okay so we are including all the urls of the employee emp app okay and this uh, function also we need to import from the django.urls library so i'm going to say here at the top please include okay please include this from this particular library which i'm going to use here in order to include all the urls of the emp app now our project is successfully registered and all the urls are ready for in order to run the emp app in our main project which is called as employee management now all you need to do is run the server once again let's say uh, like this python manage.py run server hit enter and it is going to restart the application like this in this particular url just copy this and let's go to the back to the browser here and let's hit enter see at the beginning you are going to get let's uh, you have this admin route see let me just increase the screen size a bit see you are, it's going to say that you have a, the admin route all employees route and single employee and where you are going to give the uh, your uh, an employee id like this and it has to be an integer value and it will take you to that single employee page and this will take you to the all employees page okay now let me just grab this one copy and put it here at the top by putting forward slash like this see i want to go to all employees see if i say like this it is taking me to the all employees page nine again if i say a single employee and a integer number so let me just copy this come here put a forward slash paste this one here and but instead of this i'll just pass let's say single employee page one that's the employee id hit enter and it is going to say single employee page one now i'll just remove this one and put it as two hit enter c now it is coming to the second employee page now if i say some other number like 10 or something hit enter so it's going to come to the employee page 10 okay see this is how we create our app and all the routes for our application now let me go back uh, let me go back to the project over here let's save it and let's uh, have a base template for all the html pages which we are going to create okay but first before that what i'm going to do i'm going to create a see in views.py i have just created this http response which is a hard coded text at the time being okay and this is also like a hard coded text see instead of this what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove of i'm going to remove this and say uh, it's going to render okay see render is a uh, function okay in django which you can use and here it's going to take request as one of the parameters and here in either single quotes or double quotes okay you have to say in the employee folder okay in the employee uh, project uh, sorry app okay there is going to be 
a all employee dot html page okay see it's going to be a page which is called as all employee dot html page okay and just like that only i'm just going to remove this also let's copy this and paste it over here see this also single employee page also here i'm just going to rename this one as single employee dot html page so uh, all employees let me uh, make it that as a, the same name so that it makes sense so let me just copy this one and paste it over here so that i don't make any kind of spelling mistakes okay and in order to go to the single employee page so we'll be creating a single employee dot html page so let me just save it and now where do we need to create these two html files now? see you have to come to your emp app right click and say new folder which you have to name it as templates only so let me just create it as templates and in this templates folder you need to create one more folder with the same name as your app name which is called as emp hit enter and in this location i'm going to create those two html pages so let me create a new file called as all employees p l o y e s dot html okay don't make spelling mistakes though so let me come back here and let me just grab this name now in the same emp folder now i'm going to create a new file called as single employee dot html page hit enter and done okay so this is how we are going to create the html pages okay so first uh, in that app templates folder in the templates folder one more folder which is called which will be named as same as the app name and then in that folder we are going to create all the html pages which is required for the that particular app so in my case it is emp so all emps and single employee page now uh, let me just uh, come to the all employees and uh, hold shift not symbol hit enter and here or let me tell in h1 tag like all employee page like this okay and uh, for timing i'll simply just write a paragraph just to see the difference i'll simply say like this now i'll come to the single employee page shift not symbol hit enter and i'll say in h1 tag like this single employee page okay like this and uh, for time being i'm not going to display the employee id uh, so uh, i have both the files ready with me and here after this one uh, let me just put a paragraph tag saying lorem and it will write a dummy paragraph for us now let's go to the browser and check out the page one more time okay so first uh, every time uh, you just please refresh the page okay and then let's go to all employees page so let me just grab this one very quickly put it here at the top after putting forward slash paste it hit enter and uh, i think we have made some kind of a mistake see it says uh, uh, this template does not exist okay so maybe i have done uh, the error in saying like this okay see uh, here it says uh, at line number seven or something okay line number seven in all views.py i have made a mistake which is called as employee forward slash all employees dot html page so let me just go back and rectify that very quickly so let me just open up the visual studio code so let me just go to views.py and see here i have mentioned that in emp folder there is going to be all employees.html page okay now let's come to our main project and here we have our uh, urls.py and uh, i don't think here we have made any kind of mistake but uh, still let's see uh, okay include uh i don't think uh, i've done any kind of mistake but uh, let's uh rerun the server and uh, let's check out okay see let me just uh, stop the server let's say python manage.py run server hit enter okay let me let it just restart from the back end okay now let's go to the browser and check out one more time so let's go to the browser yeah i guess uh, let me just refresh the page and now let's go to the all employees page let me put a forward slash over here like this and hit enter yes perfect okay so we are done no, uh, no mistake okay we just needed to restart our application that's it okay now let's go to the single employee page let me grab this and paste it over here and uh, just uh, for timing just simply give some random number over there hit enter and uh, uh so i think uh, it says did not match because i just forgot to put a forward slash at the end so let me back, put it back again and hit uh, the number two hit enter and as you can see we are on the single employee page as well okay see right now our page does not have any kind of um, 
bootstrap coding or anything okay so let me just uh, very quickly grab bootstrap.com and let's go to bootstrap.com and let's grab all those uh, bootstrap files and attach it to our html code now in order to do that first of all what i'm going to do is uh, see this is the root folder of our application see this is the root folder see in this root folder only i'm going to create a new folder which is called as templates templates in this one what i'm going to do i'm going to create a html file which is called as navbar okay and a new file which is called which will be called as base.html which will be the main file in which i'm going to attach all the html code and even uh, the bootstrap coding and everything and uh, this uh, page is going to get inherited by all the other html pages so first let me just uh, very quickly go to uh, get bootstrap.com website uh, all you have to do is see just click on the documents i'll just scroll down see this is this is the sample the bootstrap code so let me grab this let's go to our visual studio code and paste it here in base.html see it simply says hello world and it has one script tag over here okay and the css links it is already attached here at the top now here uh, we have uh, two more uh, script tags so let me just grab those also and put it inside our application like this so let me come here and put it and you have to put it inside the body tag of the html page okay but make sure see this is the file see we have the bundle min.js file and here we have uh, one file called as a uh, uh, popper min.js okay just make sure bootstrap and the bundle are the first two files and this uh, script tag is the third one so let me just paste it over here like this okay so this will be the main file base.html file and here uh, it says h1 so let me just uh, make this as employee management employee management system like this okay so this there is going to be an h1 like this and let me add some bootstrap class name so uh, let me add it later on but first uh, let me show you how i'm going to uh, do this uh, and extend this file to all the other html pages okay see in this file what i'm going to do i'm going to say okay i'm going to create a block okay which is going to be called as content see here all the contents will go and this block is going to end here and end the block which we have named it as content like this okay now let me come back here and now this file this folder okay which has this base.html file has to be registered inside your project in settings.py file see if i just scroll down see it has a another list which contains a dictionary like this and it has lots of key values pair and here it says dirs means all the directories from this particular project which we have to mention over here in this particular list and that can be done using the os library operating system library from python okay which we'll have to import it at the top and using os i'm going to say like this i'm going to use the path variable and say join the path to this base directory see this is the base directory okay so in order to mention that that is the base directory here in the join function itself you will just have to say like this base underscore dir okay and then in the base directory we need to mention there is a folder called as templates which we have just created see this is the folder templates so that name we have to type it here tmp -S, like this okay then uh, just uh, go to the top and here we need to uh, import we need to import that os library so let me just put it like this import os now let's save it and our project knows that in the templates folder that in the base directory we have the templates folder from which we can get uh, that base.html file and from this base.html file it can be extended to all the apps which we have just created see in the emp we have the templates and in the employee management okay see all employees.html page okay uh, instead of uh, writing all this html code see i don't i don't need all this html code anymore okay i'll just remove it off and here at the top using the jinja syntax okay all you need to do is say extends okay the file which is called as base.html in double quotes or single quotes like this okay now let me uh, get that uh, block as well see this is the block which is there in base.html so let me just grab this one and put it inside all employees.html page like this and uh, my h1 tag which says all employee page okay let me cut it from here and put it inside this particular block 
and let's fix the indentation a little bit properly so that we can see where the coding is getting applied see this will be and uh, instead of h1 here let me just put it as h3 for time being okay now i'll grab all of this and let's go to single employee page and put it over here like this and instead of all employee page let me make it as single employee page single employee page like this okay now let's save the file and let's check out now in our application okay now let me come back to my application and see now if i refresh this see this uh, is coming from the base.html and this is what we have written inside the block content see now let me go, go back to the single page that all employee page so let me just come here the forward slash and say all employees hit enter and this is the all employee page for us okay see this is how we are going to write okay our bootstrap coding along with the base.html file see now let me come back to base.html and now let's add some bootstrap class names see i'm going to say a class bootstrap class name called as a text hyphen center text hyphen center is going to make the text which is coming from base dot uh, html exactly in the center of the page like this okay now let me go back here and let me say like this bg bg stands for background color and let me put it as red let me save it let me refresh okay it didn't get applied sorry it's bg uh, sorry not red it is danger okay danger is red color in bootstrap so we have got the background color as red okay let me give a little bit of padding uh, let's say two uh, let's refresh so that is done and text i want it in light color so i will say text hyphen light that is white color so let me just refresh and that is also done okay see we have the employee management system project ready with us now what i'm going to do i'm going to create a navbar okay i'm going to create a navbar and that navbar also i'm going to create in this uh, templates folder which is in the root, root directory so let me just uh, minimize this tree for time being and here i'll say like this i'm going to create a new file which will be called as navbar.html so this navbar will be having uh, just uh, the links uh, to go to other pages and whatnot okay so here what i'm going to do I, i'm just simply going to create a normal division uh, i'll uh, keep the class name as header so this is a shortcut for creating a division which will be called as header like this okay see now what i'm going to do is see i'm going to have two navbars okay means one on the left side and one on the right side and that how you can do it uh, i'll just show you here in uh, getbootstrap.com see uh, here just go to bootstrap.com and just type navs okay just type navs and you are going to give navbars like this see uh, one on the, on the left side and if you just scroll down this is on the right side and here we have one on the uh, right side as well okay so you can choose whichever you want okay so first of all let me grab this one okay which is on the left side towards the left side now what you need to do is you just uh, copy this one and just put it here inside the header okay so you have just created one navbar which will be on the left side of the page like that okay and then what i'll do i'll just come here at the bottom and i'll grab this one also which is towards the right side let's grab this one and let's go to our visual studio code and after this see this is the navbar first navbar which is will be on the left side and this will be the next uh, next one okay which will be on the right side of that particular this thing but this is i have just added okay see if i just refresh this okay it is not going to show up anywhere on the screen okay that is why because uh, we have not included this uh, okay in the main uh, base.html page okay we have not included that anywhere here okay so it is not getting extended to all the other html pages as well so what we need to do is see this navbar.html file code has to be imported to means it has to be included in base.html and that can be done here at the top after after writing the h1 again using the same jinja syntax like this and you have just have to use the include key keyword and name of that particular file which is called as navbar dot 
var.html close it with the double quotes save it and let's go to a browser and let's refresh it okay see as you can see we have got this link as well as this navbar okay but they are not in one line anymore okay it's one below each other okay and uh, here let me go like this and uh, see uh, let me just go back to our visual studio code and rectify that issue okay see i want both of them in the one single line okay so let's go to the navbar.html and see this uh, this is the child one and this is the child two which uh, we are having inside this particular division which is called as header okay now what i'm going to do i'm going to say like this uh, see display hyphen flex uh, see that's this a boost up class name for this if i save it let's refresh it and see as you can see both of them got aligned in one single line okay next to each other now i want a separation between these two okay i want a separation between these two and uh, these links should be here at the right and these links should be here at the left side so for that what i'll do i'll use a bo again bootstrap class name which is called as justify content center or you can say uh, justify content uh, between like this now let's save it come back refresh and as you can see these links are on the right side and these links are on the left side now one more class name i want to add here uh, that is called as a uh, bg background color okay light now if i save this refresh so as you can see it has got a little bit of uh, background as well okay now uh, let's come to our uh, visual studio code and uh, instead of this active i don't want this active okay and this link i'll just make it as uh, home so this is the home and here i'll make it as all employees okay all employee page like this and uh, this disabled one is not required so i'll just remove it off for time being okay and from the right side also i'm going to just remove this entire uh, li item that is not required and here the first anchor tag i'll just uh, make it as a uh, login and here let it have the register and the last one i'll just make it as logout logout button and i'll just remove off this uh, boost up class name which is called as disabled and add an href to that href equal to uh, for time being we'll just put it as hash symbol and it is not going to go anywhere okay so we have our links ready with us and let me refresh see as you can see we have we can go to the home page we can go to all employees page login page register and logout okay so right now it is not attached to anything yet as of yet right now okay now i'll just make us uh, some small changes uh, in my web application so let me just uh, grab my base.html okay and see this whole thing the url and the main content of the application okay what i'm going to do is i'm going to just uh, create a division over here okay and i'll name it as uh, class name i'll give it as main main content okay so all the main content are these things are so i'll just uh, grab it and paste it over here inside that one okay and this main content now what i'll do i'll just say a bootstrap class name which is called as container and there will be left side and right side little bit of gap because of that container bootstrap class name and if i do like this and see our application is uh, appearing really nice right now okay and one more thing what i'll do is here i'm going to change this uh, color of this uh, anchor tags which is in nabar.html into uh, let's say dark color or something black color so this is the bootstrap class name and let me add it like this on all of them okay so let me just come here hold control d and it is going to select all of them at a shot give some space and say one more bootstrap class name which is called as dark and text hyphen dark will give that uh, black color text on the website so let me just refresh so as you can see we have got home all employees login register logout links and they are all in uh, black color right now and this is the main content of the page right now all employees page okay and if you go to the single employee page also it's going to be like that itself single employee page one or two whatever number you want to give for time being you can give it like this okay so our design parameters for our application is done okay now let's go to our website and start designing this actual uh, links okay this actual links can be done okay uh, through uh, the anchor tags as well okay we just have to mention okay 
which route it has to go to okay and that has to be done using uh, the jinja syntax as well okay so you need to go to that particular page using the jinja syntax here in the href parameter and we should mention that which is the url pattern okay which is the url pattern see let me go to the emp and first show you the views.py where we have said that uh, this is going to be the html page of that particular application for which we have created a url here that is called as forward slash employee uh, sorry the all employees and forward slash and then here we are given a name called as all employees see i'm going to use this name parameter see for this one i'm going to use this name parameter and for the single employee i'm going to use this uh, single employee name parameter in nab.html inside the href using the jinja syntax so let me come up here okay and add the jinja syntax over here like this okay and here first parameter you are going to pass is called as url and here in single quotes okay it has to be single quote because outside we have already used the double quotes so let me just maximize the screen and show you very quickly see outside i have already used double quotes so inside i will use the single quote okay and write the name of the view okay let me just go to the urls.py and show you see this is the name let me just copy this name come back to that file naba.html and paste that name over here whatever we have named it okay just like this okay and it says home page uh, let it be the home page itself all employees page let it be that only the home page okay then uh, for all employees also i'm going to do the same thing so let me just grab uh, the whole thing and paste it over here like this okay see right now all employees and home page both are same so let, let me just keep it like that itself so let me save it okay we don't have any any routes for login log, register or logout so i'm just going to leave those things uh, uh, like that itself okay now let me just uh, refresh my page so let me just come back to my page so let me just refresh see i'm on the single employee page okay and if i click on this uh, let me just refresh see if i click on this home page see it should come to all employees page so it is working perfectly fine so let me just go back to single employee page 2 i'll click on all employees see it's going to come to that particular page as well okay so we have the home page as well as the all employee links both of them working perfectly fine together okay now now since uh, we are in the all employees page and i want to make uh, this as the home page of my application now see guys if i just say this uh, route 8000 and hit enter see it is going to say page not found and uh, in order to go to all employees page i have to copy this url and paste it over here and in order to go to the single page i have to do the same thing okay but i want to create uh, this all employees page only as the home page of my application so see if i uh, don't have to uh, do this uh, and hit enter okay this automatically should be the name uh, main page of the application so in order to do that okay what i'm going to do is see first of all let me um, uh, let me do like this let me come back to my visual studio code see here uh, in our emp okay app we have this uh, urls.py see this is the route okay see this is the route which takes us to the all employee page see just like this only what i'll do i'll just copy this okay and paste it over here once again and instead of giving any kind of route i'll just leave it as empty okay see this also will take me to the all employees page like this and for that also we have named it as all employees okay see i've just created a route which is like empty so empty means we have to go to the all employees page see this is how we are going to make that page as the, the home page of our application so now let me just refresh this one let me go back to the browser and see right now it's in 8000 and if i refresh okay see let me just uh, go back here and if i say enter see now this route is saying all employees page is the home page of my application see home page link also is working that it is going to show me the all employees page and all employees link also it's going to get come back to this particular page itself so this is how you are going to make a, a starting page of your application from the app itself see instead of now it does not say that we don't have that route and all those things now that the basic functionality is ready okay see here what i'll do is i'll just create a new link over here which is called as add employee or something and we will get a your uh, you will get a html form from where we can add new employee into the database so first thing what i'm going to do i'm going to uh, go to this uh, <coughs> naba.html 
and let me create one more link like this so let me just copy this and paste it over here and here let me say add employee instead of all employee so this will be a link to add a new employee into the database okay and for time being what i'll do i'll just keep this uh, as hash so it doesn't go anywhere so now let's uh, come back to the browser and let's refresh it okay so we have the add employee page as well means the link okay now in order to add an employee so first thing what i'm going to do is see in your emp app okay in your emp app let's go to views.py and you need to create another function called as uh, let's say add employee and it is also going to take a request as one of the parameters and it's going to return render okay render is the function which takes the request as a parameter and in your emp app okay in your emp app you, you are going to create a, a new html page which will be called as add employee.html so let me just change this one to add employee.html so let's save it uh, and we need to create a route also for this particular function okay so that route is going to be get, got created in urls.py file so let me grab any one of these uh, urls as well and put it here and just uh, change the url to add employee and we don't need any kind of integer value inserted so from views dot okay in views file we are going to create we have just created a function called as add employee and for that name also i'm going to keep it as add employee as well like this so we have successfully created our views as well as so views is add employee and add employee.html page and urls.py we have the route as add employee and in views file we have created the add employee function and we have named it as add employee okay now the only thing what we need to do is we need to create this particular html page inside the templates folder of emp so now let me right click click on new file paste it and hit enter and just like uh, the other files i'm going to inherit this base.html file here itself so uh, let me go to the all employees page grab the whole content close it come to add employee page paste it and here i'll say add new employee page so add new employee okay page is not required i'll just remove it off okay so here is where we are going to have an html form from which we can add a new employee into the database so now let's uh, check out the page for time being so let me just refresh and we need to update this link as well because if i click on this it is not going to come anywhere so let me just uh, go very quickly into the navbar.html and let me grab this now and paste it here in the hash section and here the name which we have used is called as add employee okay or uh, let me just uh, verify one more time so it says add employee in urls also it is or uh, add employee so let me just grab this name only here so that we don't make any kind of spelling mistake so let me go to the navbar and let's paste it over here so now let's save it and let's check out the browser so now refresh now let me click on add employee see we are we are inside the add employee page so all employees home page is also the same all employees page so our link is ready with us right now so now uh, let's create this html form so let's go to bootstrap.com and here in the search field let me type it as forms and it is going to give me a general form like this okay so whichever you like you can uh, just copy paste so let me get this one it has a email and password field okay uh, let me just grab this one uh, let's go to our visual studio code and uh, in add employee.html page see it says h1 over here sorry h3 over here which says add employee and here let me just create a division in which i want to create this form so let me just uh, copy paste like this see inside the division i've just copy pasted this code and now instead of uh, this h3 or uh, let me just make that heading a little bit smaller so let me keep it as h4 okay and uh, the same thing uh, i think uh, we need to do for the all employee page as well so it says all employees right so let me just make it as 
h4 and here also single employee page also let me make it as h4 and on all the three pages okay first let me just save all of them and here uh, let's add a class name okay let's add a class name called as text hyphen center okay so text will be exactly in the center so let's grab this one and put it in that all employee page as well so this is going to be the class name and in the single employee as well let's give that class name over here single employee page okay and then let's come back to the add employee page okay so uh, it says add employees i have given okay add employees dot html page so let me just uh, go back here in views.py it says add employee dot html page okay so let me just uh, mm, do like this let me copy this one okay and let's rename this one okay add employee okay oh sorry not not this one so it's all employees sorry i'm talking about add employee so we are perfectly correct okay now let's come here in add employee.html page and uh, now let's just uh, look at our website so let me come back here refresh and we have got our a form okay and here the text is in the center see all employees so it will be in the center as well add employee and single employee also okay so now in this one uh, let's make a few corrections in uh, this whole division let me give a class name called as card and let's say some kind of a padding uh, let's say five and let's save it and now let's check out the browser okay so see a card will give it give it uh, look like a background and border and all those things okay and we have given a padding so that uh, there is a space inside like this and now uh, we have an email field we have a password field we have the checkout field okay and we have the submit button so i don't require uh, uh, this uh, checkbox see this is the division for the checkbox so i'll just get rid of that okay and instead of submit button let's make it as add employee button okay and it says primary so primary is uh, okay primary is nothing but the blue color okay and here a, we have a division which says password and uh, this division which says uh, we will not share your text uh, the email part that also i will remove and here i'll say input type is text okay input type is text and all these things id gd uh, all these things are not required so i'll remove it off okay and everything uh, here I'll say roll number okay I want to give the roll number for uh, or you can say like the employee ID or something okay so let me just make it as employee ID okay the companies can give employee IDs for the employees okay and just like this only uh, let me just grab this whole division and put it on top of this one where i want to write the name of the employee so input type is going to be the text for that as well then let me grab this whole thing which it once again and here let's say i want to get uh, the email id of that particular person so email employee email or you can just simply say it as email itself like this okay and uh, here also i'll just keep it as name and uh, here uh, i'll add one more uh, parameter which is called as placeholder and i'll say enter the employee id like this placeholder and here i'll say placeholder is equal to enter <coughs> the name here let me give a placeholder called as enter the email id enter the email id and uh, we will have two more fields one for address and one for phone number so let me just grab this one paste it two more times here and here let me change this email to address so i'll say like this enter the address then the last one let me put it as phone enter the phone number so I think our form is done. Uh, let's go check out the website once.
let's refresh yes perfect okay now uh, so there is a lot of gap in between so let me just uh, decrease this uh, margin and let me just decrease this padding also a little bit and uh, margin at the bottom which it says mb means margin at the bottom so let me grab all the margins let's uh, let's reduce it to one okay i think they should be more than enough so let me come back let me just refresh the page yes i guess this is much better okay so we have a form ready with us okay where you can add a new employee into the database now uh, let me just uh, grab this one more time let's say two let's save it and let's now check out the website okay so this is much better now okay so this is much better and if you want to give any kind of colors or anything uh, say this whole division uh, let me say like this bg hyphen uh, dark or uh, not dark uh, let me give it as danger itself so that uh, it matches with uh, the layout of uh, our header okay see as you can see we have created like this but uh, that color is not that uh, appealing so let's uh, leave it okay so let's not give any kind of colors as of yet right now okay later on we can change those things so let me come back and let's uh, refresh this page okay so i think uh, this should be more than enough so we have uh, all these fields where we can enter the id the name email address and the phone numbers and if we click on employee details add employee button it's going to register that employee and save that information inside the database of the application now uh, we'll just uh, do few more details that uh, let's uh, do this uh, add employee button is the, in the center of the page so uh, let me come to this page uh, here here it is we have our uh, button uh, first thing what i'll do is i'll just uh, put it inside uh, a separate division so let me just grab this from here cut it and paste it over here and for this one uh, let me add a bootstrap class name first one is the container okay it will give some gap uh, left side and right side and uh, then i'm going to say text hyphen center so what it's going to do it is going to make the button come exactly in the center of the html form so let me just uh, go to the website and just refresh so now we have the button in the center but um, i don't like uh, this uh, blue color primary color uh, and uh, let me do it like this it says button primary right you can just say like this outline okay outline just gives the border to that button and uh, let me put it as success okay now you'll be having a green color outside border on the button and and this button was also i will just make it as a small button so it makes a little bit smaller sm sm stands for a small button and uh, let's give a little bit of uh, let's say margin okay so uh, no margin is not required i guess so let me just save this one and this whole division itself will get give some margin let's say margin at the bottom or no not at the bottom let it be at the top okay so margin at the start you can say okay or you can say empty also okay and now let me come back to the browser and let's refresh so as you can see we have got uh, a green color bordered button okay but when i hover on that it becomes green color so now we have the form ready with us now all we need to do is we need to create a database for this particular form where we can store all the employee details and that has to be done inside a file which is called as models.py see in your app emp app there will be a file called as models.py so here is where you are going to create a class and you have to mention all the database table column names so here uh, let me make that class for us so so i'll say like this class employees there and make sure that uh, class name always is in capital and so this will inherit see it will inherit from a models package a class called as model so employee will be the database uh, table name and now whatever fields i mentioned over here are going to be the columns of that particular table so i'll say like this role number is going to be the models see i'm going to create a models and in that it's going to be a character field and that max length of that roll number okay can be anything so i'll just uh, put it as 100 then we have the employee name that's going to be one of the columns uh, in the database table so that is also is going to be a character field 
say of max length uh, name can be let's say some 50 characters okay now uh, let us uh, do like this uh, shift alt and downwards arrow if I give okay it's supposed to copy the details but it's not happening I don't know why okay no worries so what I'll do is I'll just uh, copy this one paste it over here one more time so we have done with the employee name then I want the email column and then the address column so let me just type it over here and then the finally the phone column phone okay so we have successfully mentioned that uh, employee is going to be our table name and it will be having these five columns in that one okay the role number employee name email address and phone number so let me save this one now in order to create the database what we need to do is we need to first uh, stop the server from running okay so let me come back to the command prompt and stop the server like this and we need to type a command which is called as make migrations using that manage.py file so i'll just go and say like this python manage dot py make migrations i'll hit enter and uh, what it will do is it will create a file called as 0001 initialize.py file and it will create a database table which will be called as employee okay and for time being what it will do it will just note down what are all the sql queries which we need to run in order to create that particular table along with these columns inside that one okay so our database model is ready but the columns are not ready yet in order to create uh, all those columns uh, all you have to do is say like this python use the same manage.py file and say migrate migrate that's it okay when you hit enter that is where you'll say that uh, all your migrations uh, are complete and it has successfully created uh, a table okay it has successfully created a table called as employee and uh, that employee table has these columns row number employee name email address and phone number so you have to remember these two steps so one is make migrations and another one is that makes the actual database tables and the columns is called as migrate so now that our database uh, table is created along with all these uh, column names okay we need to just enter the details from the html form and it will get stored in the database so now let me come to add dot employee page and uh, see here is our form see here here is our form and this form okay will have two parameters over here okay two attributes which will be one will be called as action parameter okay where the the form has to get submitted and all those things and uh, this has to get submitted in uh, let me just show you views.py file is there see this is the function okay this is the function and for this we have a route called as add employee so this name okay this name is what we are going to give inside the form parameter here in the action parameter so, so first let it put a forward slash and paste that over here and then the next parameter here we have to mention that we have method okay method is i'll give it as post see when you are entering inside the database okay when you are entering your values into the database it should be post and when you are fetching the data from the database you can give it as get okay so let me just put the method here as post and for each and every input field you will have to keep names so here the first employee id okay here it says employee id and uh, let me just go to models and see instead of saying role number i'll keep it as employee id employee id okay so employee id is going to be the main uh, database table so let me just uh, come back here uh, so uh, command is running so make manage.py make migrations hit enter and uh, it says uh, was employee role number renamed to employee yes so, so let me just put it as yes and it will all also create a migration emp then finally i'll say make migration that is done python manage.py migrate let's hit and uh, the session has applied the my changes done like this okay now let me go back to add employee.html page and uh, here it says input type equal to test class enter employee id it says and here i'm going to name okay i'm going to keep a name 
called as employee id like this okay now uh, let me just make this into the next line so that we can see properly and just like this only we have to keep names for each and every input field so let me grab here and put it over here and change this name to employee name let's save it and let's come here and paste this over here and say employee uh, email let's save it and let's do for the address as well name equal to employee add rss and the last one here i'll say name equal to employee phone like this okay so we have kept uh, separate separate names for each and every input field which we have okay now what we need to do is we need to go to this views.py and here is a function which adds uh, an employee into the database table okay so first of all what you are going to say is like this uh, if uh, the request method asked by the user is post uh, so if uh, request dot method be hod asked by the user if it is post uh, so first uh, what you have to do i'll write it here in comments uh, uh, take okay take all the parameters parameters from the form by their thir class name by the names which we have kept names kept okay and store them in a variable or anything like that and that i will keep it here see the variable name i'll keep it as em employee id and here i have to say like this i'm going to request okay from that post method and get the parameter whose name is employee id okay so this is coming from the form so whatever name we have kept so let me just show, show you the form very quickly so here is that particular name which i have kept up so if in order to not make any kind of spelling mistake so let me just uh, copy paste this on this one okay and just like this uh, okay we have a few other parameters which we have to get them by their name so the next parameter i think uh, we have named it as employee name so let me just copy this one and paste it here like this and in both the places i'll name it like this so employee name also done so the next one is the employee email let me grab this one from here paste it over here as well as on the right side okay and the next one is the employee address so let me very quickly grab this one paste it here on the left side as well as on the right side that but last but not the least is the employee phone so let me copy this here and here okay now let's save it let's give some gap okay and now we have to write an sql query in order to send all these details into the employee database table now how to write that query is that you need to uh, make an object of your employee model see that is the table name so i'll write it here like this create uh, create an object of the employee model see why employee model is because see in models.py we have created a class called as employee and it has all these uh, columns okay but the table name will be in small letters called as employee so let me just go back to the views.py and here i'll simply name it as uh, e is equal to employee so i've just created that employee object over here okay but we need to import this see import this uh, model from this models.py so let me come here and say from dot models okay let's import a model called as employee that's it okay now this http response is not required i'll just remove it off let's save it and now let's come back here okay now what we need to do is see we need to have this employee id okay this employee id as this parameter so in this e so you're going to say like this e dot see in the employee table we have this 
employee ID variable. Okay, see, and let me show you that models.py. See, here we have that variable over here. So he knows that variable. So let me just grab this one from here and say employee ID is equal to whatever this employee ID is there in line number 17, like this. Okay, then just like this only, I'll say e dot. See, the next uh, variable name here we have mentioned is employee name. So let me grab that and put it here on the left side. And the employee name is going to be whatever employee name I'm going to get it from the form here from the line number 18. And just like this, e dot, I'm going to go to models.py and see here it just says email. So let's copy this and put it here in views.py file. And this value will come from the employee email variable which we have taken here at line number 19. Okay, and just like this, let me say e dot. Okay, what is the next one? See, it just simply says address. Copy that one and put it over here and employee address will come from the form so let me copy this and paste it over here the same thing i'm going to do for the last one which is called as phone and that is going to get traveled from the html form to this file like this now once we have secured okay all this information and uh, the e variable reference variable we just have to say e dot save that's it okay and our employee information is going to get saved inside our employee table okay now before running the code okay we have to do a small change that is in add employee.html page is here okay see as soon as you start your form code like this here in Jinja syntax you have to mention one csrf token csrf means cross site request forgery okay see this is to make your forms really really secure so let's add here is the line number 10. So I'll just use the same Jinja syntax once again. And here you just have to write in small letter CSRF underscore token. Okay, like this. So our form is also 100% ready along with the database tables and everything. Okay, so now let's uh, go to the command prompt. Okay, uh, let's rerun the server python manage.py run server hit enter. And it is going to run the application and if no errors are there you are going to get this particular link okay so let me grab this link let's go to our browser and let's refresh the page from beginning okay see all employees right now uh, it simply says a dummy paragraph and all those things like that okay now let me just click on add employee and we are going to get this and see employee id i just want to keep it as 101 okay employee name i'll keep it as Rajesh and employee ID or uh, email. I'm going to keep it as Rajesh at gmail.com. Address some Bangalore phone number, some phone number you type, and let's click on add employee. Okay, see it has uh, added the employee. Okay, uh, as of right now, we don't have any uh, front page uh, developed so that we can see that employee details. Okay, but what we can do is we can go and check it from the back end. So that can be done by, uh, let's see, see this is your database.py file. So db.sql3, you just right click on this, say open in file explorer or something. Okay, see reveal in file explorer, then you just copy this location. Okay, see this is the location where this uh, database is going to get created. Now, uh, just uh, go and open a new tab or something. Uh, let me open a new tab and here there is a website called as sql3 viewer uh, you just type it as a sql3 viewer web app like this okay it's going to give you a link like this click on this and here you cl just click on open file and give your path where that file is located see your file is this one so select that file click on open and as you can see it is going to show you all those uh, database tables see for our uh, project this is the employee table which we have right like this id employee id e name and all those things okay id comes automatically employee id we are going to give whatever company employee id is there see if i click on this name right now see first employee id it is only going to create and it auto increments one by one and here employee id which we have mentioned that has come that is 101 employee name rajesh email rajesh at gmail.com address bangalore and this is the phone number okay see this is the way to check from the back end whether the data has got inserted successfully or not okay so next what i'm going to do from the this one itself see 
let me create 102 let me create this employee as suresh then email id suresh at the rate gmail.com address let me say delhi phone number some random phone number you put and click on add employee that's it now let's come to this website and let's refresh again go to file select this uh, folder now if i see this see here id 12 automatically it implemented 101 102 suresh rajesh suresh at gmail.com delhi and some random phone number which we have just put okay see this is the way to check from back end so now let me come back to my application so you can close this file this is not required now and now uh, let's make a small change uh, in our application that uh, if uh, we try to enter any one of the details into the application means one employee see uh, if i say like this 103 and give separate name and when, you, when we click on add employee page okay see right now it is showing this page itself okay but as soon as i add a new employee it should directly go to the all employees page like this okay so we should navigate to this particular page so after adding a new employee so uh, let's do like this uh, let's come back to our page and here in uh, use.py file see as soon as we save a person or an employee okay we should redirect okay so i'll say here like this i'll add a written statement and say redirect redirect r okay see in redirect uh, we just have to import here redirect redirect is one of the functions which we need to import and here we just need to mention the url of the application which takes you to that particular page okay see in views.py itself okay uh, we have a, a function name called as all employees okay so let me just grab that name and put it over here uh, but first let me put a for a slash and then put it like this okay and this has to be either in single quotes or double quotes so let me just very quickly do it like this so so this is the function okay so this is the function which automatically takes us to the all employees page okay and then later on we'll write a query to display all the employees in this particular uh, method okay so now let's save this one and let's go to our browser and check out whether it is working perfectly or not so let me just refresh this one and let's say 103 and uh, i'll name it as mahesh email mahesh at the rate gmail.com address let me tell as bangalore itself and some random phone number so if i click on add employee okay i should come to the all employees page so we have successfully navigated to all employees page and we have added one third member as well into our emp management system now the next step is to display all these users in this uh, html page that is that is all employee.html page so let me just go to that particular page so let me just uh, close this one is not required anymore single employee page will come back later so navbar uh, in navbar also what we'll do i uh, will uh, change the few things later on so let me close this one uh, this one also is not required anymore so let me just close all of this okay so we have the views.py file so where we have written the command to save the information into the database table now in all employees.html page okay see randomly now it says simply h4 text is at the center and uh, here what i'll do is i'll just create a separate division okay just to show all the employees so i'll just uh, have a class name called as container okay container and it's like a card okay see for time being just i'll put it as hello and show you the details of that uh, all employees page or you can say the home page see if i just refresh see you can see a border because it's a card and we have just uh, said uh, hello that's it okay and in place of hello okay first of all what i'm going to do is i'm simply going to say uh, like h4 tag or something and uh, i'll say no uh, h4 is already there i'll just add h5 and say i'll say list of employees okay so this is the list of employees which we have over here and uh, this one will have a class called as text hyphen decoration that is underline now let me save it and let's check the browser 
if i refresh see it says list of employees just okay now just below this list what i'm going to do i'm going to uh, create a table okay i'm going to create a table where i can show all these details are so i'll go to good get bookstore.com and here let me just click it click as uh, tables or just table okay and you can have uh, uh, any type of table you want so first let me grab this one itself okay it's a simple table which has like three columns and three rows right now so let me grab this one and let's go to our visual studio code and here after this uh, list of employees i'm going to put the table over here or uh, you can say uh, one second let me put this one inside a separate division okay division for a table okay and inside the division let me put that particular table and table body okay since we have three rows uh, let me just get rid of two rows and we have like this okay so here i want to display the id of the person and here whatever the employee id which i have given employee id then here employee name and the next heading yes employee email and just like this two more columns i'll copy so let me copy these two paste it over here and change this to employee address and here let me change this to phone number okay and it will have two more headings but uh, right now those two will be empty like this so let me just come here and put it like this okay and then for time being what i'll do uh we have how many one two three four five six seven eight okay so we have eight of them so let me just grab these three very quickly so it becomes seven and one more one more table data so let me copy this and paste it over here and here what i'm going to do i'm going to create an anchor tag okay later on it will go to the update page or the edit page and here we'll have an link okay which will take us to the delete okay which will take us to the delete and here i'm going to say like this class it should look like a button so i'll add a button like this and button should be a small button so i'll add a bootstrap class one called as like btn small and button outline should be uh, for this one i'll say success okay i want a green color button and uh, for the delete button i'll add these class names just like this okay and the color i'll give it as danger that is the red color okay so we have two links over here and uh, the href property i'm not going to give anything as of now so i'll just put it as hash symbols then i'll cover up that one later i'll get rid of this uh, extra spaces from here okay and here is where you're going to see all the details like this okay and i think uh, our table is um, okay okay so let me just go to the page and let's check out so if i just say refresh okay so we have id employee id whatever employee name email and all those things and uh, the whole table what i'll do i'll say text hyphen center let's save it and let's go and design this page okay so as you can see now we have the text also in the center of the page and here we have the update button and here we have the delete button as right now it's not going to go anywhere because we have just given it as has symbols okay like this very nice now let's come to our this code okay and see guys where it says one mark auto at the rate md all those things okay here is where you're going to show the uh, actual employee id and all those things fetched from the database okay fetch from the database so what we need to do is see in views.py okay see this is the view which shows us the home page and it will fetch all the employees from the database and it will show in that particular table uh, which we have created inside all employees.html page now we just have to write a query from this particular model to fetch all the employees okay so first what i'm, what I'm going to do is i'm going to say that model name see the model name is employee from which we want to fetch all the details so those are all the objects so you just have to say employees objects dot all i i need all the employees 
okay and i'll just store it as a variable or something like that so i'm simply going to say that emp okay so emp is a variable okay or you can say uh, you can say it as emp itself and you can name anything whatever you want okay now what i'm going to do is see i'm going to pass this emp variable into this em all employees dot html page okay you just have to give a comma over here and as a dictionary okay key value pair okay you have to make a variable see i'll just make a variable called as a uh, emp itself and on the right side you have to pass this one okay like this or not like this colon and pass it like this okay see this is a new variable which we have just created and uh, this is a variable which is on the right side okay just to avoid the confusion so i have mentioned both as the same names so our variable name emp okay it is getting passed to all employees dot html page oh, one small change i need to do here is uh I, this has to be either in single quotes or double quotes like this because it's a variable name which is going to get passed okay and this is a string parameter or i'll do one thing i'll just name this variable as uh, all employees itself okay see all the employees are getting fetched from here so i'll keep it as all employees that's it okay so now this will be the name which gets traveled so let me just copy this one and go to the all employees page see here is that table okay and this is the table body and uh, just before the table body okay i'm just going to write a for loop using this syntax saying that for each employee in all employees that is a variable name which it getting traveled over here okay and i'm going to end this for loop here like this uh, end for loop okay see so if there is an employee okay then we will loop through each and every employee so what i'll do i'll just put a if condition here if all employees are there okay see if all the employees are there then we will loop through each and every employee like this okay and here is where i'm going to end the if condition so end the if condition like this okay so this is the loop okay now in this place okay where it says one okay i need to show uh, what is that the id okay that, that is the id which is generated by the django itself so here what i'll do so uh, i'll do one thing uh, for timing i'll leave this as one itself uh, but where it says mark okay uh, there i'll have to use this uh, jinja syntax and say like this each employee dot employee id see that is the column name of my model so let me just show you that models dot py see whatever name we have kept here okay that is going to be displayed over here like this okay so let me just grab this one and paste it like this okay and uh, let me copy this uh, whole thing and paste it in all the other td values like this and each employee id is done then i'll come to the employee name i'll copy this and put it over here and then uh, i'll copy the email so let me grab this and put it over here each employee dot email like this and then we have the address and the phone so let me copy both of them paste it over here and let me copy the phone as well and paste it over here like this okay we'll come back to this uh, id later on so let me just uh, save this one and let's check out the page okay see these were all the hard coded text from before okay now if i refresh this okay all these things uh, should come from the database table okay for some reason it's not coming because all employees did not get fetched from the database table okay see here oh, okay once again see i made a spelling mistake see if it says all employees so let me just change this name to all employees let's save it let's go to the browser and let's refresh okay so as you can see we have employee id 10 101 and this is a hard coded yet so just it said just says 111 that's it okay then all the email ids employee address and employee phone number have come however accordingly we inserted into the database table okay now let's go back here and now to change this one hard coded one okay see in django we have a uh, one syntax see the loop is going to start from one two three four like that so what we can do here is we can say like this for loop dot counter c-o-u-n-t-e-r okay it's an inbuilt parameter in django which will tell you that for loop is running from one two three four something like that 
okay so now let me just save this one and let's go check out the browser now right now okay so this values should become one two three four automatically see like this okay so now we have successfully have an add employee page from where we can enter and it goes to add employee uh, all employees page like this so let me just uh, add one more employee like this 104 and I'll name them as Angad email id then give some address let me say like this goa and some random phone number so if i click on add employee so it should directly come to the all employees page and here is the fourth value which which we have just inserted into our application and here uh, see guys not every time uh, we need to do this uh, for loop dot counter okay because we have one id column which is automatically generated for us by the django itself see let me just add uh, one more uh, see here like a uh, right now it is just saying id and uh, i'll just uh, make one more table heading uh, i'll say it like id from db okay from the database table something like that okay see instead of having this for loop dot counter i'll just copy this one more time and just uh, put it over here one more uh, row i've just created like uh, and i'll just create it like a td tag not a th table heading okay and instead of saying for loop dot counter you can say like this each employee dot id because that is the one of the database table columns which has got created by the django itself see now if i come here and just refresh this see see id which is generated by the id column one two three four has come like this okay so we can have the id from the for loop or else directly from the database table as well so both of them are working perfectly fine now let's come back to our application so here see now what we need to do is we need to have an update button as well as the delete button so right now it simply says hash symbols that's it okay now whom we want to update okay and whom we want to delete will be based on the employee id which we are going to pass to these two routes so we need to create two more routes which actually deletes uh, this particular employee by its id okay so in views.py okay see like how we have uh, this uh, all employees page and single employee we have to still code for this one and then we have, we have the route or uh, we can say view for adding an employee and just like this we need to create two more routes one for update and one for delete so very quickly let me just uh, create the delete function first so let me name it as delete lete employee okay and uh, it is going to take a request as one of the parameters and employee id is the parameter which is going to take to delete that particular employee from the database so now here we just have to say like this okay see we have the model uh, imported here at the top so let me grab that name over here okay and here uh, from these objects see employee objects i need to say get that particular employee okay get that particular employee by whatever uh, details we are passing so i'll say like this uh, uh, id will be the primary key of that particular uh, function uh, and primary key is this time the employee id which we are going to pass that's it okay and i'll just uh, have a reference variable like this on the left side of the model then you just have to say e dot there is a function called as inbuilt function delete which is going to delete that particular person from the database table okay and as soon as it deletes what i'll do i'll just uh, refresh okay i'll just reload that particular all employees page only from where the delete button is being clicked so you just have to say return and redirect okay return and redirect to that same page okay so that to that same page see let me show you that page itself see this is the same page and if i click on this delete button it should refresh this button uh, this page itself and it should show the remaining uh, student uh, employees which are there in this particular application so let me just go here and say see this is that all employees page see this is that particular function so all you have to say here is go to this particular page that's it okay or you can use the route as well if you want okay and if i just say for uh, just it's okay you can just say the function name that's it okay now let's go to the browser let's refresh and uh, and see we have not yet uh, updated these links uh, see right now if i click on delete nothing is going to happen so what we need to do is first we have to update those links in uh, all employees.html page see these are the two links uh, and here see again in jinja syntax you will have to say like this see first of the first one of the parameters you are going to say is the url okay url 
in order to go to the delete page okay but we don't have yet, uh, the views yet okay see views we have created but we have not created the url yet so here what i'm going to do say just like add employee i'm going to create that url which will say delete employee so instead of add employee i'll say delete employee and in views file okay we have created a function called as delete employee so we have just named that also and for this uh, name i'll just name it as delete employee like this but uh, in order to delete uh, an employee you just have to give some kind of a primary key okay and it has to be an integer type of key which will be called as employee id like this and put a forward slash here at the right side so let me just get rid of this extra white spaces okay and so now we have a delete employee route along with which takes an integer value to delete that particular this thing so now in all employees.html page okay first of all here after saying url i just have to use the single quotes like this and write down the name okay write down the name uh, of this route okay so let me just copy this one let's come here and paste it like this okay and now see this time it has to go to delete employee route okay but with whatever employee id which we are going to pass see that is this each employee dot id okay so let me just grab this one and paste it over here and say dot id okay you can use the employee id as well or just the id which is generated by the django itself okay so our functionality is done okay now let's check our website let's refresh it once okay now see guys if i just hover on these things sir okay see here at the left hand corner okay you'll be able to see which link i have hovered on and it is it will also give the id of that particular employee see it says one at the last now if i just uh, go towards the two it will say employee id is the two if i say three here it says id three then if i click on the fourth one not click just hover on this and it will say the fourth id okay see right now i'll just delete this uh, third person okay with the id three if i click on delete see that person is gone and we have left with id like one two and four okay the third person is gone whose id which was generated by the django three was three okay but uh, since this id is getting confused with this id okay what i'll do i'll just remove of this uh, the counter okay i'll just remove of that counter see this one i'll just remove of this row itself okay and uh, this also okay see that is the id from the database i'll just keep it like that so let me just save it and now let's go back to the browser and let's refresh okay see this is where the id is which was generated by django and i just click on the third person and that third person is deleted okay now again just like this i can delete on any one of these people and that particular person will get deleted so let me click on the three, two with that particular two id and we are left with only id one and four okay so our delete functionality is also working perfectly fine so among the four crud operations create read update and delete only update functionality is left see if i click on the update okay it should fetch all these details from the database table okay apart from this one okay we should not allow the id to update okay we should not allow anybody to change the id of that particular person so what i'll do when i click on the update okay it should take this id go fetch that person from the database table and we should display it on the screen and then we can make some changes in that one and then uh, when it updates it should show here in this particular page so for that let's come to our visual studio code and first uh, in all employees page okay so we have uh, this delete uh, link so we have this delete link and just like that we need to have an update link over here okay but in order to do this uh, first we should have the view okay to update that particular person and we should have the url so first let's start with the url itself so let me just uh, grab this whole line which is for the delete and here i'll just uh, make the route as update update employee and it should we should pass one integer value update employee by its id and here also view i'll create a function called as update employee so let me just grab this name and uh, here also name also i'll keep it as update employee okay so now let me save it now let's come to views.py and 
I'm going to create a function called as update employee. Okay, in order not to make any mistakes, I'll just paste it from that particular file itself. And this also is going to take a request and the employee ID whom we have to update. Okay, and uh, see after updation. Okay, let me let me return and redirect. Okay, let me return and redirect re. Okay, let me redirect them to the home page itself, which is the all employees page. So let me just simply grab this one and let's paste it over here for time being. Okay, then we'll write the inside code for actually updating that particular person. Okay, which matches with this employee ID. So here we have created the in URL.py we have created the URL and uh, here uh, let me just save this one. Okay, I, I don't think. Uh, um, because uh, the color has not changed yet i don't know why so let me paste it once again yeah now it is done so add employee is done okay and all employees okay see just like this only okay just like this only i'll crop copy this and instead of hash symbol over here paste it here and it will get updated also so now here all you need to do you need to mention the name which you have provided that is update employee okay there also it will take each employee's id and it will go to that update page okay so now let me just save this one and just show you uh, exactly in the browser so let me just save okay refresh it see now if i hover on the update okay see here on the left bottom corner you should see update and the one id along with that okay now if i hover on the fourth one it should say employee update employee hyphen four sorry forward slash four Okay, so this is how I come to know that my update functionality is working perfectly fine and it will take me to this uh, update route. So, which is which we have created in views.py file. So, in this function also, first what we have to do is first we have to fetch uh, that particular employee from the database table. So, let me put it like this. See, the primary key is called to EMP ID and uh, from the employee object, it is going to fetch me this particular employee and which we have named it as E. See this variable e uh, no doubt it will fetch that particular employee for me okay but after fetching what it should do is it should display all his information into an html file so what i'm going to do is see first as soon as uh, we click on this okay it should show me a html page so i'll say like this return and render my request okay to show me an html page which is in this uh, emp forward slash update employee.html okay see this is the html page which i want to see okay and then that one single person okay see that one single person who this information okay see this will be the information of that single person with this particular id okay so here i'll just make a dictionary saying that uh, like this uh, you can say it like this uh, in double quotes or single quotes you have to say single employee single emp is whatever this E variable we have just fetched okay and then after writing the sql query and everything uh, what we can do is we can uh, just uh, uh, redirect uh, them to the all employees page so for time being what we'll do we'll just uh, comment out this line okay and let me just uh, correct that spelling as well okay so what it is going to show you is an update page from where you can update the employee details so let me just grab this and in the emp folder itself you may have to create a new html file which is called as update employee.html page okay so for first thing what we are going to do see first uh, uh, just uh, save this uh, views.py file and like how all employees are getting shown to you okay we don't need all the employees but uh, we just need uh, one detail okay for time being what i'll do i'll just uh, grab this uh, whole all employees page and put it in all update employee.html page okay and see guys here it says all employee page right i'll say like this single employee page okay single employee page and um, here it says list of employees i'll just say employee details employee details t a i l s okay employee details are whatever we see in this particular table okay and now see uh, let me just uh, save this one and uh, see i don't want a update or delete button uh, here in this uh, uh, page 
So, what I will do? I will just uh, get rid of these two. Okay. See, this is just uh, a page which shows uh, that particular employee for me. That is it. Okay. And uh, for time being, what I will do? I will just uh, save this one like this. Okay. See, first of all, what you should do? See, right now, what I have done is I have just created a table where all the information about one single employee will is going to come. Okay. And see, here I do not need to loop through all the employees because I have just only one employee. So, I am just going to remove that for loop from here and the name which gets passed over here is called a single EMP. Okay. So, let me grab that name and put it here in if all employees is there, if single employee is there. Okay. Then this name, okay, this name's ID and all those things should get shown to me. So, let me just uh, hold control D, backward slash, paste and it will change to single employees ID, single employees employee ID and all those things like that. Okay. Now, let me just uh, save this one for time being and let me just show you exactly what the update functionality is going to do for us. Okay. We have not written the update code yet. It just uh, shows me that particular employee details on the table. That's it. So, let me just refresh it and let me just click on the update button of the fourth employee. Okay. Whose ID is 4. If I click like this, see, it has fetched uh, the fourth person whose ID was 4 from the database table and from here we can write the update code in order to update uh, this particular values. Okay. For now, let me just go back to the all employees page and let me click on the sec first person whose ID is 1 and see our functionality is working perfectly fine. Okay. Now, all we need to do is write uh, the update code. Okay. We need to write the update code which actually updates uh, this single person. Okay. And it automatically navigates us to the all employees page where we can see the changes. So, here is that function, okay, update employee dot, uh, update employee and uh, the single employee information is going, getting traveled to update employee dot HTML page, okay. And as I showed you before that this is our HTML page, uh, the update employee page, but here there is no option for me to update anything. I can't change any of these details yet uh, unless it is like a form and where I can uh, change these values, okay, which is fetched from the database table. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to change uh, the update employee HTML page itself. Okay. I'm, I'm going to change the entire HTML page like how you add an employee. See, add employee page is a form where you need to insert the values and add a new employee. But I'll just copy the whole thing. Okay. I'll just copy the home thing. I'll go to update.employee, update employee.html page, control A, paste it. Okay. And here, okay. Here I'm going to say like this update employee details. update employee details like this okay and uh, the form is going to remain like this but here you need to do one small change see the value which gets uh, sent here okay which it is called as a single employee okay see in views.py let me show you see this is the variable name see this is the variable we have named passed it to update employee.html page. So, let me just grab this name. Okay. Let me just grab this name. Come to update employee.html page. Okay. And see when this form starts. Okay. When this form starts, you can say uh, like this. See here for each and every input field. Okay. I will just uh, put the value property like this. Value is equal to. Okay. We will have to mention in the double quotes like this. And inside that, I am going to use the Jinja syntax and say that single employee which we were passing. Okay that person's id should get displayed okay that should be the id okay and i'm not going to allow id to uh, get changed by the user it is it is just for our understanding purpose that this person's id is that one okay and i'll just make it as read only parameter like this okay and i'll just copy this value property whole thing and put it here on the next input field which shows us the name of that particular person and that value will be the employee name. So, employee name parameter which we have kept it in models.py. See, in models.py whatever name we have typed here that is what we have to mention over there. Okay. So, let me just go here and so employee name also done and here is the id uh, which um, is getting shown to us. Okay. But uh, instead of uh, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. Instead of uh, the id generated by the Django, I am going to show the ID which the person has entered for the employee person. 
So instead of ID over here, see in models.py, I have a ID called as employee ID. So let me grab that one and paste it over here. So this is the location. So paste it like this. Okay. Now this will be the ID which was given by the user employee ID. Okay. And employee IDs can be anything. Okay. It can be a single character along with the strings and all those things. Okay. Now let me grab this whole thing, paste it over here for the email ID. And here we have in the models.py, we have just named it as email. So on the right side here, we just have to say email single emp dot email let me give some space so that it is very clear to understand like this okay now let's grab these two and let's do it for the address input field as well let's change this to address dot add -E and then last input field let's change this to value equal to phone like this okay and now instead of saying add employee i'll say update so so we have the update button as well okay see right now i have not fixed uh, the action parameter okay see i have not fixed the action parameter it still says uh, add employee but still uh, just for our reference purpose i will just show you the update page and show you guys okay see this is the single employee page okay so let me just go to the add employee sorry all employee page so first let me refresh the browser itself see now if i click on the update okay see it is showing me a form and it has fetched the id 101 name rajesh and rajesh at gmail.com and here address and here like this okay i think uh, the address field has not come properly so let me just go and check it once properly the add -S. so i think we have uh, made a mistake while copy pasting the code so now let me go back and let's refresh the page so no i guess uh, it didn't work uh, here a is capital so let me just change it into small letter and let's check once in the model so a d d r e s s yes perfect okay so now everything is fine let's go back to the browser and let's refresh and as soon as i refresh the address is also getting fetched from the database table okay now when i click on the update okay when i click on the update it should run the update function okay in views.py see in views.py we have created this particular function to update okay and this is the name of the function and in uh, urls.py we have named it as uh, update employee as well okay so what i'm going to do is see uh, let's come to this update employee.html see how before in action parameter it said add employee okay just like that we just need to change it into view uh, update employee so let me just grab this name let's go to update and paste it over here that's it okay and since uh, we are posting new values into the database i'll keep the method as post itself okay and i think everything else is perfectly fine the method is post okay and we have a button which says update and it has uh bootstrap class name is outline hyphen success okay and uh, these are they are the only need, uh, changes which needs to be done now see since i have updated this action parameter okay let me just show you that views.py see this one update employees uh, functionality is just to fetch that person from the database table and show it on the update employee.html page okay its actual functionality is not to update the values okay it is to fetch the values okay fetch that particular person from the database table and show it on the screen okay and this is that update employee.html page okay and here we have the update button but when i click on this update button see all these new updated values okay should go to some other uh, route which actually writes the update query to update the values into the database so what i'll do i'll just say uh, this should go to some kind of a function called as do update employee okay see this should be the router which actually writes the code to update the new values okay to update the new values so i'll go to views.py and i'll create that function over here so i'll say df to update this particular employee by taking my request as one of the parameters view est and whatever the employee id we are passing okay whatever id we are passing like this okay then i'll say like this see first of all what we what we need to do is we need to get all the values all the new updated values from this particular form okay this um, update employee html form by whatever names we have kept okay see 
name from the previously only it says employee id and all those things here okay now here what i'll do i'll just say like this updated id okay updated id or you can say like this updated em employee updated employee id okay we are going to request okay we are going to request from the post method okay and get that new uh, employee id by whatever name we have kept over here so let me just copy this name and paste it over here like this okay so this is going to be the new updated id and this id is not the id which is generated by django this is the id which is given by the user so now let me just copy like this and paste it uh, four more times because we have four more values and here i will say updated what is the next one name email address okay here i'll say name here i'll say email here i'll say address and here i'll say phone okay like this and let me fix this indentation so that uh, we can see the code properly okay and here instead of saying employee id okay we have to type the name whatever name we have given here so emp dot name let me copy this and paste it over here then let's go back to update and employee email so let me grab this one and paste it over here and then whatever name we have kept here which is called as employee address that also let me put it over here and again let me uh, say employee phone emp phone that is the name we have kept in the html form and that will come here okay and as soon as we are uh, done taking the new values from the html form all we have to do we have to create an object of this particular model which is called as employee okay so let me just grab this name come here okay and in this objects see in this employee objects okay we need to get okay we need to get that particular person okay whom we are trying to update okay so first we need to update this particular employee id so i'm going to pass like a primary key okay primary key always uh, is a unique one but we need to give like that okay so i'll just create a new employee object like this so let me just call it as emp or something like that okay and then what we need to do is uh, using this uh, emp variable okay using this emp variable okay in our database table okay see in our database variable whatever employee id we have kept uh, okay that is going to be the new updated id which gets passed from the html form okay just like this we will use the emp id and say we have the employee name okay and this should get updated with the updated employee name which is going to come from the html form and just like this okay we need to do for the other parameters which it says i think uh, uh, the next one is i think address sorry email okay i'll go in that sequence itself so i'll say here employee dot email okay will be this particular parameter which comes from the html form so let me put it here and emp dot address okay please remember these are all the column names which we are writing on the left side okay on the right side what we are writing is the html code okay the form from the html code so let me just copy this one and paste it over here and last but last but not the least okay we have the phone number column okay in the database table and that will be this uh, updated phone value so let me copy this and paste it over here and our fetching the details and setting up the new details is done for our employee table now only the last thing which is left to do is to save these details inside the database table so we just have to say emp dot save is the function for that okay and all our details will get saved in the database table and we can view them on the all employees dot html page so here let me come here at the bottom and redirect this page see after update i'll just redirect it to go to the home page so let me just come here see 
earlier i had written this over here so let me just cut it from here this function update function and put it here at the bottom and let's get rid of this hash symbol and let's say redirect to all employees page okay and there we should be able to see the updated values of that particular employee so now let me just uh, minimize this let's uh, uh, let's say let's go from uh, the starting page itself okay so what i'll do i'll just uh, stop the server okay it's always uh, better to stop the server and rerun the server from the start so that uh, all the files gets updated okay so it says no issues and all those things and uh, let's grab this url and go from the first page of the application so if everything works fine we would have completed all the crud operations create read update and delete them okay now uh, let's click on update okay the fourth person okay the person with id 4 and let's click on update and its values are getting fetched okay so say uh, i'll not uh, allow this uh, id to get updated okay so i'll just add a read only for this one or maybe later on we can uh, change it as well but uh, here let me put it like this angad singh this is the updated name okay and here also i'll say angad at gmail.com and uh, goa i'll just change it to bangalore and some other details for a phone number like this and let's click on update and it should redirect us to the home page itself but uh, here it says uh, that request method post see using the url defined okay django tried the url patterns in this order but it could not do see here it says see i have all employees single employee add employee delete employee update employee but uh, i have not mentioned that uh, do update employee okay i think i have missed uh, in that file itself so let me come back to the urls.py and here see i have not mentioned that url as well so let me just copy this one paste it over here and put it like this okay do the update employee things like that okay and for that i have just created a method called as i think do em update employee in the views.py okay so let me just grab this name from here itself so that i don't make any kind of spelling mistake so let's go to our urls.py okay so let me just paste that name over here here as well and finally the name also i'll keep it like this only okay and i think now i have to uh, update the url as well so in all employees page okay so here when i click on the update button it shows me this uh, update thing update page and uh, update page okay url which says do update employee okay so let's copy paste so that i don't make any kind of spelling mistake so this was the error what we have done okay now let's come back to our page and if i just refresh this page and if i hit continue okay see it says uh current path does not match any of this do update employee okay current path it says it does not match okay now uh, let me go like this okay so let me just refresh this page okay so these are the details old details which got fetched okay let me ha uh, this much is enough okay now what's happening here is see uh double do update employee i have named it okay and here uh, the method is post and everything okay see i have not mentioned uh, the post method itself okay i've just said uh, take some values and update okay so let me just show you that views.py okay see earlier when i was entering a new employee details i said if the request method is post okay then only you fetch all the details from the form and then save the uh, new employee details and then go back to this particular page okay but here we have not anything we have not done anything like that so let me go here the top and check out uh, see update employees action maybe the action parameter is uh, not given properly or something okay see action parameter it says do update employee yes that is perfectly fine so here is where we have done the mistake in the action parameter see we have said uh, do the update employee details but we have not passed uh, that single employees id using which we, we are trying to uh, update the values okay so let me just grab one of these uh, things uh, okay 
just let me grab one of these things and uh, in the Jinja syntax itself I will have to write this parameter over here okay and I'm not going to use this ID I'm going to use the ID which is generated by the Django itself okay so this is the ID which is going to get passed to the do update functionality okay so now let me just save this one and let's go back to the browser okay and let's refresh the page okay let's refresh the page so here we have uh, I'll say like this Angad Singh okay and here I'll just change this to N okay and uh, address I'll change this to Delhi or something and then we'll add a new phone number something like this and then when we click on update it should go to the home page of the application but it says you have called this URL via post but the URL does not end with a slash and you have appended the Django redirects the URL okay it says uh, we have not added uh, the slash over here okay see that is a HTTP request okay and see if we have to identify where we have exactly uh, done the mistake see here it's going to mention all the uh, file names like this where exactly what line number and all those things okay and uh, it's going to give you the actual uh, uh, reason as well okay what where it went wrong and all those things okay and a little bit of explanation also it is going to give you like this okay see you called this uh, url via post method but uh, the url does not end with a slash and you have appended the slash sets okay and uh, django does not redirect to the slash url maintaining and all those things like that okay now all we need to do is go back to this particular page okay see and just put a forward slash over here save it uh, let's go to the browser okay let's refresh it and let's change some other names okay so let's update the values i'll name it as angad singh and here also i'll make it as n and instead of saying goa i'll just make it as delhi i'll update the phone number as well something else okay and just click on update okay so as you can see the update functionality is also working perfectly fine like this okay and uh, the delete functionality update okay and let's uh, add employee okay add employee is not working sorry all employees is, i'm clicking on the wrong link so let me click on add employee and uh, id let's say uh, anything like e or uh, let's say 105 or something then i'll name this one as suresh email id is suresh at the rate gmail.com address some bangalore phone number some random phone number let me type like this okay and click on add employee details so as soon as that you add the employee his name is going to appear over here okay we can click on update and change a few details whatever we want see bangalore i'll just change it into goa phone number let's update some other update numbers just click on update and as you can see the bangalore got changed to goa and phone number also got updated okay and in order to delete we just have to click on the delete option and those persons will be deleted from the database tables okay so this is how you make okay a crud application in django okay create read update and delete okay i hope you like this video okay please like and subscribe my channel thank you very much